This week we're talking about phytoplasma and mistletoe. So phytoplasma resemble bacteria in shape and size and properties, and they have a cell membrane but no cell wall. They're located primarily in the phloem, which may interfere with the translocation of sugars, which can inhibit leaf growth and flowers. So some of the symptoms you will see, yellowing or reddening of leaves. There are uh, phytoplasma diseases that are yellows diseases, and yellowing occurs on the youngest leaves spreading to the older leaves. That's how you could tell that it's not necessarily a nutritional deficiency because that would not be spreading. Stunting, break of bud dormancies, witches brooms, fasciation, here's a picture of maple with fasciation, change from floral to sterile leaf type structures and flowers, excessive proliferation of stems or roots, swelling of buds or stems, and decline and or death of the plant. So tissue proliferation on rhododendron looks like this. It doesn't even look real, right? This is outside of the greenhouse. Um, I haven't really looked this year. This is from a couple of years ago. We had uh, some leaf hoppers on this early on. You can see the damage on the leaves here. And then you have the fasciation that occurs on the stem. And you can see better on this side. Here's aster yellows and echinacea. You see the flowers don't really um, happen. Look more like leaves. Other symptoms. One of the most common symptoms is virescence. This is normally colored plant parts such as flowers that are green in color. And then the echinacea also is showing some brooming. Phytoplasmas can spread through budding, grafting, or cutting. They can spread through natural root grafts. They can be spread by insects, especially leaf hoppers, and sometimes aphids. They can also spread from one plant to another if it's covered with daughter. So, of course, managing leaf hoppers is really important. Rogue out infested plants, manage weeds, harboring phytoplasma, disinfect pruning equipment. And these are some of the leaf hopper vectors of Western X. I've posted some information uh, on this particular phytoplasma on Canvas. So encourage natural enemies, parasitic wasps, predator bugs, etc. And hosing will work to some extent. And if you do that right now, you might be able to catch the wingless nymphs. That's what's out there right now. So aster yellows are transmitted by the aster leaf hopper. The leaves will be yellow, abnormal branching occurs, and this is a cosmos actually, a yellowed leaf-like tissue forms instead of flower parts. Here's aster yellows affect several species in the asteraceae, but not just asteraceae. And some of the less susceptible would be nicotiana, geraniums, impatiens, etc. Here's what it looks like on lettuce. Here's what it looks like on black-eyed Susan. Here it is on potatoes. And you can see this is the aster leaf hopper. On the right, it's got wings. On the left, this is a wingless nymph. So mistletoe, hemlock dwarf mistletoe is a leafless flowering plant. It's endophytic system of the modified roots. Aerial shoots are the reproductive portion. Endophytic means inside. They're obligate parasites, so they need something to parasitize. So the endophytic system functions as feeding structures, and they embed in the cambium and sapwood of host of tree, twigs, branches, or trunks. And here are the structures. The female plants with berries are on the left, and the male plants are on the right. Here it is again on hemlock. Here are some other types of mistletoe. 
So you want to remove plants by harvesting or pruning mid to late summer. Aerial shoots will regrow unless you take the entire host branch off.